Hi, this is Scott Wilkinson, host of Home Theater Geeks. In episode 92, I chat with Tile Hertzens about headphones of all types. So stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Home Theater Geeks is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Home Theater Geeks with Scott Wilkinson, recorded December 19th, 2011. Episode 92. Stick it in your ear. This episode of Home Theater Geeks is brought to you by Ford, featuring Wi Fi connectivity with available sync and My Ford Touch. Now your car can be a Wi Fi hotspot. Check it out in the new 2012 Ford Focus and at Ford.com slash technology. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twit. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here, online editor of HomeTheater.com. This week, I've brought back Tyle Hertzens, the editor of InnerFidelity.com, after last week's show about the celebrity headphone death match. Uh, we had so many questions in the chat room and so much material to talk about that we didn't get to that uh, I decided uh, he should come back and we should do a part two. So, Tyle, welcome back. It's great to be back here with you, Scott. I'm sure, sure glad you are because, uh, as I said, we got a lot to talk about. So uh, we're going to get right to it. Those who are tuned into the live video stream at live.twit.tv or signed into the chat room at irc.twit.tv can post questions for Tile, and I'll pass along as many as I can. And I know we had a lot last, last week, so uh, hopefully uh, many of you are back and we'll post those questions again. Um, so, Tyle, I wanted to start in a general way uh, to hear your thoughts on in-ear versus on-ear versus over-the-ear or circum-oral, to be perfectly right. technical, um, headphones. What, how do you distinguish them? Uh, which ones perform better? Which ones give you better noise isolation? Uh, do you have a strong preference one way or the other, or does it depend on the application? It's largely application dependent. I mean, headphones really are, uh, since they're worn and uh, very intimate, it, a, a lot depends on what exactly you want to do with it. I, I love getting questions on my YouTube channel. People say, do you like the Edomotix or the Beats? You know, they're two completely di different types of headphones and it, it just doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> so, and there are uh, uh, these funny terms, uh, circumoral around the ear, supraoral on the ear, intraconchal, oh, yeah. which is a <laughs> earbud, and there's a whole bunch of names for them. <clears throat> but fundamentally, mm. there is uh, around the ear, on the ear, uh, in the concha, like an earbud, and in-ear headphones. So there's so basically those four types of headphones. And then there's a variety of uh, other things that can be melded with that. For example, is it a sealed headphone, which means it, it captures the sound and doesn't allow any to radiate out? Uh, or is it an open headphone where you can uh, hear outside sounds and the oh, sound yeah. can so, radiate out? Such as like many Sennheisers uh, are, are open ear phones, right? Sure. Oh, they have both. Um, so... Um, so here's the, the sort of basic rundown. <clears throat> uh, and these are very general rules. Uh, okay. They're all broken one way or another, but <clears throat> the best sounding headphones are fundamentally the around the ear, circumoral open headphones. Uh, an open headphone allows the driver to radiate out the back and not have any uh, chamber that creates resonances. And so an open headphone can theoretically sound better than a sealed headphone because in a sealed headphone, the sound is captured in this enclosure. And that, of course, uh, brings the opportunity of uh, resonances in the chamber. Mm -hmm. So open headphones can typically sound better than sealed headphones and with any type of headphone or with, with any uh, circumoral or super, super oral headphone. Uh, 
Now, on the ear headphones, super oral headphones, uh, they kind of come in two different flavors. One is where there's a, a, a small pad like this. And so you have a, a pad that re, uh, uh, a ring that rests on the ear. And then the other type is more like, um, well, I don't have the right kind of pad, but it's just a flat pad that's uh, uh, completely covering the surface. Right. Um, and there's not too much difference between those. Um, the Small, super oral, on-ear, sealed headphones tend to be the most problematic because they have the smallest sealed chamber, which tends to make them have the most colorations of any type of uh, sealed headphone. Mm -hmm. Then there's earbuds. These are the little, like, uh, you get with the Apple iPod, the little earbuds that go in the ears. Typically, those are the worst sounding headphones, mainly because you don't get a consistent seal uh, in the ear. And uh, what I mean by seal in the ear, I mean that the coupling between the earbud and your ear canal is c varies a lot depending on the position of the earbud. And well, as plus, a the, plus the fact that you're the, if you're talking or chewing food or something like that the the actual dimensions of your inner ear canal change a little bit and i would assume that that would then affect the relationship between the ear canal and the earbud on an earbud because it doesn't go into your ear canal that's not quite as much a problem as it is with in-ear headphones ah, uh, ah, those okay. are the ones that go in and seal in your ear canal those are like the edemotics uh or the these are the uh in-ear headphones with the little earbud on it or the little tip on the end that go, seals right. in your ear canal. And those are in-ear headphones. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're making a distinction between in-ear in and Ear earbuds. Bud. Right. right. Which don't actually go in as far, I guess, then. No, they just kind of rest in the concha, which is why they have such lousy bass response. Mm. The concha, uh, by the way, is the, is the outer ear flap, also known as the pinna, but it also is called the concha because it kind of looks a little like a conch shell. Well, the uh, actually the concha is just the bucket around the ear. So the pinna ah, is the whole ah. thing. And the okay. concha is just this cup shaped right around the entry to the ear. Uh, I uh, got ear you now. Okay. All right. So the, and that's why they call them intraconchal. So the, the fancy word for an earbud is an intraconchal uh, headphone. Okay. And then, of course, there's the in-ear headphones, and those are a sealed headphone. They don't have uh, uh, oh, they don't that I'm aware of. I've not heard of any that are open. In other words, that the back of the chamber is open, and uh, they provide the best uh, isolation. Um, so, in terms of uses. Full-size open headphones are typically used by audiophiles and are also great for headphones for around the house. You can hear the phone ring, people talking, you know, so you can, you're not completely shut out. Uh, Full-size sealed headphones are typically good for uh, recording professionals or if you want a, a comfortable headphone, but you're also in a relatively loud environment, they're okay for walking around town and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, sealed headphones tend to give you maybe 10 to 15 dB of isolation. Uh, and then there's noise canceling headphones and they can be uh, around the ear or on the ear and they'll tend to provide, um, they're almost always a sealed headphone and they'll tend to provide 15 to 30 dB of isolation, kind of depends on the frequency there. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then the, the uh, smaller, uh, on-ear headphones are useful for portable applications because they're a little lighter weight. They're a little, uh, um, uh, sometimes they can be more sturdy on your head, not always, but um, in the case of these DT1350s, they, cer they certainly are. Um, they're uh, good because they're handy. You're just small. You can put them in a backpack. They're, you know, they're, they're good for portable use. Um, earbuds aren't good for much, really. Uh, <laughs> 
because they don't have much bass response, but they're handy. You can put them in your pocket very easily. Uh, they tend not to sound very good. And then in-ear headphones are great for uh, traveling because they can provide the most isolation of all headphones. Uh, they're actually much better isolating, isolating than noise-canceling headphones. So in-ear headphones uh, can isolate a lot, and they're great for travel. Also, they're small. And there's two types of in-ear headphones. There's in-ear headphones that are shallow fit and inner headphones that are deep fit. And there's only mm -hmm. a few that are deep fit. The Edemotix, uh some of the Klipsch, um, there's a few more, but that really go in deep. Um, and they're, they're really the best for isolation. What you were talking about a moment ago with uh, your voice, your, uh, hearing yourself chewing and the changing of the size of the ear canal. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a, a phenomenon called the occlusion effect, and that is when you seal up your ear canal, if you seal it up right at the entrance to your ear canal, and you chew or you sing, it's really loud. Um, right, right, exactly. That's called the occlusion effect. And uh, with, with the deep seating in-ear headphones, there's a uh, about halfway in your ear canal, there's a, a bony part of your uh, ear canal. So the, the bone, the skin is right on bone at that point. And if you can get the headphone to seat there, the, the in-ear headphone to seat there, the occlusion effect reduces dramatically. Mm. So it's the deep seating ones that you can get rid of a, a lot of the occlusion effect. Now, Midnight Rider in the chat room is asking, what about earbuds that sound good and stay in place when you're jogging? You know, uh, uh, I haven't looked into this too much, but I, I, my understanding is there's a, a product at Radio Shack that uh, is like a little cushion thing that you can fit into your ear and it kind of uh, keeps it more firmly in there. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have a, a product name, but there are some things you can do to, uh, to get them to seat better in your ear. And then, of course... Uh, Sony and uh, Sennheiser, uh, Sennheiser in their Adidas line have uh, uh, earbud headphones that have a headband. So they're small, they're, they are earbuds, they're intraconchal, but they have a headband or a band that goes over the ears and around the back of the neck and they'll stay in much better. That keeps in place, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the problem with running is that you definitely, definitely want to have some situational awareness. And with in-ear headphones that seal up your ear canal, first you have the occlusion effect and you can hear your footfall on the ground. It can be quite loud. Yeah. Uh, and secondly, you don't have the situational awareness. You can't hear as much of what's going on around you. Uh, and like if, a, like if a siren it goes is going by exactly. you or something like that. Exactly. Uh, uh, and so it's better not to wear sealed headphones in that kind of application. Another great headphone for that application is the Koss uh, KSC 75. It clips onto your ear. So they're two separate pieces that clip onto your ears. Oh, yeah. Um, Somebody in the chat room mentioned something about in-ears that, that clip onto your earbud or your uh, earlobes. Yeah, I haven't seen an in-ear that clips onto your earlobes, but the, but the KSC 75 does clip to your ears, and it's hmm. a it's an on-ear headphone. It's a, a pad headphone. Oh, um, I see. And okay. it's quite good. It, it's quite good. Also, the Cost Porter Pro because it's so light, it doesn't move around much on your head, but you it, it has a regular headband. And hmm. both those headphones are quite cheap twenty, thirty, forty dollars somewhere in that neighborhood. Cost. KSC 75 and Cost Porter Pro. Mm -hmm. I've heard a number of people in the chat room are saying they love their Sennheiser uh, uh, HD 650s. The HD 650, uh, I don't have one on me right here, but I do have its predecessor, the HD 600. And um, these are among my favorite headphones. I think the HD 600 and 650 are great headphones. Uh, these are open headphones, so you can't walk around town with them. You'll hear too much uh, noise through it. But right. for audiophile listening at home, they are a fabulous, fabulous headphone and, and been around a long time in, in various uh, iterations. The HD 580, 600, and 650 are all of the same family. Mm -hmm. Philly Darts is asking... Uh, can you recommend a good headphone amp for that that wouldn't break the bank? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, uh, 
caught a Todd the Vinyl Junkie. Uh, they are at TTVJ, Todd the Vinyl Junkie.com. Uh, uh, TTVJ.com. They have a uh, headphone amp called the Butte, and it's $4.99. And uh, they just came out with it uh, a few months ago. It's a very simple headphone amplifier. Uh, designed by Pete Millett, who's famous in the headphone amp circles. And um, it's fabulously clean. Uh, everybody remarks as soon as they hear it that, wow, that thing is really a clean sounding amp. And the HD 600s and 650s are a little rolled off. They're a little laid back sounding. And um, with the Butte, I think uh, it would be a great match. And how much is that? Did you did you say? Uh, Four ninety nine. Uh, yes, it's it's uh, and in fact, the actual manufacturing company is Apex Hi Fi, I believe, mm -hmm. which is uh, also owned by uh, a company that's owned uh, by Todd. Gotcha, gotcha. Good deal. Great little. Uh, man. Somebody uh, in the chat room, Major Seven, says the Sennheiser K seven hundred two is a step up from the HD six fifty. Do you agree? Well. Uh, Sennheiser doesn't make the K702. AKG makes the K702. Ah, okay. Uh, well, there you go. There's and, a correction. Thank you. And the K702 is uh, much like the Quincy Jones Q701. Um, I would say it's more of a sidestep. Uh, its bass isn't as uh, pleasing. It has a, a somewhat thin in the bass. Not, not, we're splitting hairs here, but it is a little sure. thinner in the bass. It should, should have a little more weight in the bass. And for me... It's it's a little bright. I tend to like things a little polite, uh, but um, uh, the K, the K seven hundred two is a, a little uh, uh, fast sounding for me. Uh, but it's a very very good headphone. I would say it's a sidestep from the uh, HD six hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, just to mention it, because they're all the these headphones are always mentioned as a group. The Bio Dynamic DT eight eighty two hundred and fifty ohm is uh, also of in that same category of headphones. Those three have kind of for the last five years been the the, the solid performers at reasonable prices. Mm, excellent. Uh, Strike It Rich in the chat room is asking about electrostatic headphones. Oh. This is a cate category we didn't really touch on yet. No, and there's actually big news in the electrostatic headphone world. Uh, the Stax is pretty much the only maker of electrostatic headphones. Right. Sennheiser, of course, has made the Orpheus, this $14,000 headphone amplifier system and, uh, and a less expensive headphone uh, previously. And also Koss makes an electrostatic headphone called the ESP950. But Stax is really the long-time leader and virtually the only other maker of electrostatic headphones. They've been doing it for a long time, and they're very, very good at it. And they've just been purchased by Edifier, which is a big Chinese company that makes computer speakers and, and typically low-cost uh, computer speakers and stuff. And I'm, I'm writing an article about that that should be uh, on interfidelity.com today or tomorrow, I think, probably tomorrow, actually, at this point. Right. <laughs> uh, electrostatic headphones are fabulous. They tend to, you know, as a generalization, they tend to not have uh, a whole lot of bass, just like the speakers, electrostatic speakers. Right. Uh, and they tend to be very airy and quick sounding, nice transient response. Uh, just recently, Stax came out with the SR009, uh, which is a in the United States, a $5,200 headphone. And it is incredibly good sounding. Um, I would recommend the Head Amp uh, uh, Blue Hawaii uh, as an amplifier to go along with that rather than the Stax amplifiers. But uh, Head no, Amp uh, makes a great electrostatic amplifier. Uh, I'm sorry, what, what, name the company again? Head Amp. Head Amp, okay. A -M -P, yeah. And they... Uh, uh, the thing to note here is the between the two, you're talking about ten thousand dollars. So I mean, this is yeah. pretty rarefied air. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I listened. I did a review of the Stax uh, SR007. Yes. Uh, with with both the um, solid state and the tube based amp from Stax. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, boy, there wasn't that much difference between those amps. I mean, there was a little bit, but mm -hmm. not very much. What did you think? Well, I 
Uh, I, d I don't have a lot of experience with electrostatic uh, amplifiers per se. I've uh, just recently, this last year, I've been doing a lot of testing of electrostatic uh, headphones using the Blue Hawaii. Um, uh, I've listened to those amplifiers a long, long time ago, but I, it was so long ago that I wouldn't be able to make a Able realistic to. comment about it. Understood. Other than to say uh, the the recent rash of electrostatic uh, headphone amps in the United States, uh, I, I think are better at, as a rule. Head amp makes one, Woo Audio, W-O-O -O Audio makes one, and uh, Valley Audio makes one, but I don't know what to say about that one. Okay. Well, we got a ton more questions in the chat room and a lot more things to talk about. But before we do, I believe Leo Laporte has a special message for all of us. So we're back at the Twit Brick House, and I have a uh, volunteer. Michael here is going to, well, Michael here is, go Michael, Michael. See, when you go on a long car trip, nice to have something for the kids to do. I brought a little laptop. I got my iPhone. He's got his iPad. But what about the Wi-Fi? Oh, no problem. I brought along my Wi-Fi access spot, a.k.a. my Ford Focus. So, Michael, hop in here. You get in that side. I'm going to get in this side. I'm going to show you how I can use this USB Wi-Fi dongle, or a 3G dongle, to turn this into a Wi-Fi access spot. When you travel with kids, as you know, it's really nice to have some entertainment for them. They like to get online. Maybe they want to surf the web or do a little email, play some games. Ford's realized that getting connected inside your car is a big deal. That's why they have added Wi-Fi access capability to the 2012 Ford Focus. Let me show you how it works. I take this, uh, this is a Virgin Mobile, but a lot of companies make these. these uh, it's a USB 3G transmitter. Now, normally you plug this into the computer and the computer is online, but what if we have more than one device? We can get up to five devices online by plugging this into the Focus. Now that is gonna turn the whole car into an access spot. So now Michael can put his iPad on the Wi-Fi in the car. I can put my iPhone on the iPad and Wi-Fi in the car. Up to five devices. I even have a, one of these Google Chromebooks, which likes having a, a little Wi-Fi so it can get online. And uh, here I go. I just connect it up, find the Wi-Fi access spot, pick it, put in the password, and I'm online. I love this. As we drive down the highway, everybody's happy. Thank you, Ford. One of the many nice features in the uh, Ford uh, Focus for 2012 and, of course, available on other Ford vehicles. Why don't you go to your Ford dealer and drive one today? Or visit uh, the website, Ford.com slash technology. You ready to go? All right, let's hit the road. Thank you very much, Leo. That's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, Tile, we got a bunch of questions yet to go in the chat room here. Let's see. Uh, one of them certainly was, can $5,000 headphones possibly sound that much better than $300 headphones? <laughs> you know, it depends on how fat your wallet is. You know, yeah. uh, it, 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 if you are the type of person who has that kind of expendable money, the answer is yes. The Stax uh, 009 is, I heard things, you know, and you hear this saying a lot in the world of headphones, and, but it's been at least a decade since I've said it uh, spontaneously. But when I heard that Stax 009 off the Head Amp Blue Hawaii, I said, there's things I've never heard before. And if you remember last week, I told you about these tracks that I've been listening to for 10 years or more. And right. you have those a, you just, just to reiterate so everybody understands, uh, when you evaluate, when you do your um, subjective evaluation of headphones and, and right. you're sitting there, you have a certain set of tracks that you listen to all the time for, with every set of headphones so exactly. that you have a, a basis of comparison. You're not listening to one tune in one set of headphones and a different tune in a different set of headphones. You're listening to the exactly. same set of tracks on right. all the headphones you listen to so that you it's basically a level playing field and an apples to apples kind of comparison. Exactly. And, and they're only 20 second tracks or so. So I know them very, very well. <laughs> and when well. I yeah, and when I heard the Stax headphone, there was this flamenco track where they do a lot of these fingernails against strumming against the strings of the guitar, and it was like you heard every single impact of every fingernail as it struck every string. I mean, 
it was astonishing. So uh, the answer is yes. You know, um, I have to say when I, when I did the when I did the uh, SR uh, 007s, I had the, exactly the same experience. I heard things yeah. in in the tracks that I was listening to that I had never heard before. Sure. Yeah. Now, is, it worth, the, is it worth five, ten times as much money, more than ten times as much money as you might spend otherwise? Well, that depends, as you said, on your pocketbook. Yeah, uh, of course, there's the diminishing returns curve, you know, and of course, it right. really can't be quantified. I, I can say, though, that I think there's a point where even though the technical improvement would be measured in very small amounts, the the beauty that something can radiate is it is it, not on the same thing. In other words, when you get really close and it, and it really gels, then then something happens that's really more than the sum of the parts at times. Right. So so I, you know, I guess the answer for me is that if, if you've got that kind of money and if you enjoy the headphone listening experience, then yes, it is worth spending that kind of dosh on on something like that. Yeah. A bunch of questions also about are there different headphones, are different headphones better suited to certain types of music? So, for example, if you listen to rock or you listen to classical or you listen to jazz, would you recommend different headphones, different models to, to people who, who listen to different genres of music? You know, I'm kind of on, of two minds on that. I think I tend to be a little bit more of an objectivist than a subjectivist, um, although it's fairly evenly weighed. But uh, but I tend to to think a headphone should perform well with audio, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I tend not to look at things that way. Um, but I, I have to admit that I think there probably are some headphones that are better for rock and some headphones that are better for acoustic and some headphones that are better for jazz. Although I tend not to try to figure that out. <laughs> for me, it's more about the, how close it gets to accurate and neutral. Mm -hmm. Um, and whether it has any characteristic, uh, let's say, let's say bloom in the mid bass or something like that. And then somebody can decide for themselves whether a little bit of bloom in the mid bass is something that they want in their music. Mm -hmm. So I, I tend not to try to do that because I think it enters into an area of taste where my impression is not going to be, it is more often not going to be in line with other people's impression. There we're getting seriously into subjectivism at this point. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I it, you know, what you and I do, Scott, is dancing about architecture. You know, uh, you could we could write all the words you want, but you're really not going to create the experience for the user of that product. Right. And so uh, my tendency is to to try to focus on the things that can be said with some clarity, and then you sort of have to leave it up to the other person to go explore for themselves amongst those things. So, so I tend not to try to, to, to be too much of a guide in, in, in some ways, because I think it, it just won't translate as universally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, web 4334 asks, and this was a question I was going to ask you as well. Um, what about wireless headphones so that maybe you can wander around the house um, right. Have you have you done much with wireless and do uh, does one technology? I was going to ask, you, does some, one technology work better than another, like RF versus Bluetooth or something like that? Yeah, well, Bluetooth is is short distance and lower resolution. So mm -hmm. um, there's a the best Bluetooth headset I've heard or headphone headset I think it's a headset too is a it's a Jaybird. Uh, uh, headset. It's like a band. They only make a couple of products, and it's a it's a really nice sounding uh, Bluetooth headset. But for the most part, I, I don't. I tend not to like them because of the loss of resolution. Okay. Uh, the the technology that I really like is Clear K L E E R. Uh, Sennheiser uses it in their wireless headphones uh, with good effect. It, it tends to transmit over long distances. Bluetooth is a short distance or right, typically right. a short distance uh, thing. So if you want to wander around the house, uh, I would look for something with the clear uh, uh, transmission system. Now, is that, uh, a, is that a, a, a proprietary system to Sennheiser or a, a system that various companies use? Uh, is it based on yes. radio frequencies like... 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 or whatever? 
I'm not sure exactly. I do think it's spread uh, spread spectrum. Uh, uh-huh. uh, uh, I guess I, I think it's, aren't they doing that now at a little higher frequency? The 2.4 is an older frequency, and now it's an older some, frequency. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. I, I think they're using on the clear now the higher frequency, but I'm not sure. Uh, and I think it's a spread spread spectrum device. It transmits at uh, CD bit rates, a digital transmission system. Ah. Basically, it's mm-hmm. a chipset that you buy from somebody and then can incorporate into your product. Sennheiser uses it in their wireless headphones, but also Arcam uses it with their uh, uh, iCube, uh, the uh, the uh, 50 cent headphone uses the clear transmission system. So you can find it pretty broadly at this point. It works very, very well. You can attach up to four devices at a time uh, to it. So you can have multiple people listening. Mm. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a really nice transmission system. The other transmission systems that are out there are... Uh, uh, RF and infrared. Uh, the infrared only work in the room you're in, and you don't see very many of them anymore. And it's kind of crappy; it gets interference by fluorescent lights and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the RF uh, FM modulated ones are okay, but you get FM noise and things like that. They're and they're around. They're fairly common. Um, the, my favorite uh, wireless headphones in terms of uh, using it around the house are the Sennheiser RS170 and RS180. I didn't like the RS160 as much and, and felt it was really worth the up- upgrade uh, of the price to the 170 and the 180. The 170 uh, is a sealed headphone. Uh, I believe it has the uh, uh, some kind of surround uh, decoding. I'm not sure if they're using SRS or Dolby. I, I, it's been a little while since I looked at the product. But the 170 is more focused on movie watching. Um, so you might be interested in that. I, it's, it's worth a listen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the uh, 180 is more focused. It's an open headphone, and it's more focused on um, uh, uh, audiophile listening. I don't think it has any of the surround uh, decoding. And then uh, they also have a brand new one, and I'm sorry I don't know the model number off the top of my head. I think it's 220 RS-225 or something. Uh, I'm not sure. But there is now a higher-end uh, Sennheiser wireless headphone, and it's very, very good sounding, but also quite expensive. Mm. Now, um, <clears throat> you mentioned surround headphones, and that was another topic I wanted to get to today for sure. Yeah. Um because, and in fact, I got a question in the uh, chat room about it as well. Uh, Web 679 says, I love movies, but I live in an apartment. Big sound, loudspeakers, subwoofers are impolite at best. Yeah. Any, hope for, any hope for good surround headphones? Well, uh, you certainly could go the full Monty and uh, pick up a Smith Realizer, S-M-Y-T-H, Realizer. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, now, this is a very expensive device. I don't know how much. I'm sorry off the top of my head. I think I, I did a review of it, but it's, it, or at least a, a profile of it. It's, it's around three or four grand. Yeah, it's quite expensive. Um, but it's a, it's a, it, they do it right, essentially. Uh, I think there's even a calibration step where you stick a little microphone in there next to your ear canal and yep. turn some sound on, and it calibrates to your ear. And uh, to the and headphones has, you're using. Right, and to the headphones you're using, and then it also has a position sensing detector on the that you put onto the headphones, so that when you move your head, the sound uh, stays where the television set is, basically. Um, and it's now this is a, this is still though a uh, a uh, simulation of surround, a, a, right. a, a digital signal processing trickery that gets you right. the sense of that you're listening to a surround sound system, even though you only have two uh, drivers sitting next to your ears. Right. Uh, see, now we're entering a point of very, very deep complexity. So <laughs> I don't know how much we want to get into this, but well, um, there, there, I do, there, there are some he- head uh, gaming headphones, are there not that actually have separate drivers for the surround channels and for the front uh, two channels? So you got four drivers or two drivers at least in each ear phone, which give yeah. you actual surround rather than simulated surround you would think so wouldn't you uh (laughs) there's there's one even that has these uh acoustic waveguides in it and it has the drivers in the band and it and it it shoves the audio for the uh 
the sub and the center channel and the rear yeah. center or something like that oh, to both ears at the same time or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, so here's the deal, Scott. Yeah. An earphone, the, the size of an earphone, it, uh, sound travels at about a thousand feet per second. So at one kilohertz, the length of a sound wave is one foot roughly, and which means the half wavelength is six inches. Okay. Right. So at, at 5K, the, the half wavelength is about an inch, okay? So 5K with a half wavelength of about an inch is, is typically the place where you're going to get directional cues. Now, the problem is, is inside the ear cup of a headphone, one inch takes up a good portion of the, the space in a headphone. Right. What that means is sound is not propagating in a headphone as much as it, as it is being coupled in a headphone. And as a consequence, when you try to have sound come up from a certain direction, that really doesn't work. Okay. Because sound isn't propagating in there. Right. It's right. being coupled. And so you can have a bunch of drivers in there, but you're not going to get a plane wave that travels past the ear, which is what you need for normal biological localization of audio. Yes, exactly right. So the problem is, is that to make surround sound in a headphone, what you really have to do is what the Smith Realizer does and, and uh, Dolby Headphone does, which is you, you synthesize all those cues in the digital domain and then just feed the signal to the headphone. So they figure out how the sound would sound if it was coming at different angles, depending on which speaker you're talking about. And then they right. summon together at the two ears all those various... Uh, bits of information and to make a single signal out of it to be coupled into the ears. And, and, and that is the way to do it most effectively. I don't know if we've talked about it on your show in the past, but, but uh, in the uh, military pilots have uh, head related transfer function, uh, uh, very accurate ones created at the ear by going into anagoic chambers and having probe microphones being put in their ears so that they can map their own head related transfer functions and then they have a little USB dongle or like Leo had in his Ford to put it into the to the uh, plane and then the audio system in the plane that goes to the headset is calibrated for their ears and what they do then is the air traffic control sounds like it's coming from above them their wingman sounds like it's coming from the direction that he's actually at target threat warnings sound like they're coming from where they're coming you know there's acoustic signals for where the targets are that are out there beeping you know so they do really cool stuff with uh, uh, you know, artificial uh, virtual uh, localization and headphones. Um, I, I like the Dolby headphone. If you can find something with Dolby headphone in it, I think it's good. Sennheiser stuff uses the SRS, which I actually, unfortunately, I don't like very much. I think the Dolby mm. is more effective. Uh, unfortunately, the problem is, is that uh, the science says that you not only need the head related transfer function for the speakers, but you also need, need to hear room reverberance cues where the walls are where the floor and the ceiling is in to uh, assist in localization so the science says that adding information about the room uh, helps in the localization and Dolby headphone does that and you can select typically between three different room sizes the problem I have with it is, is that then you get room colorations, especially for listening to music. All of a sudden, now you have a basically they create an untreated, you know, cement room <laughs> with, a, with whatever the, the reverb, the reverberation time that they, you know, the RT60 that it's got. And uh, um, so I don't like it for music because it, it tends to color the music. But uh, but uh, for movies, it takes. A little while to get used to and then it's quite immersive so i think the dolby headphone is successful but it tends to be expensive to implement and so well, manufacturers is, tend not to it's true it's not in many things but it is in some avrs mm -hmm. um and possibly some tvs although i doubt it i think it's only mostly in avrs possibly onkyo and integra i don't remember now i'd have to look that up 
Yeah, the problem with uh, putting it in a headphone amplifier or a product that's used for headphones is that Dolby uh, licensing charges per channel. And so what happens is, is that you pay for all the decoding into the 5.1 and then you pay again to put it back into two channels. So it ends up being an exp a very expensive license for people to implement. I, I wish mm. they changed the pricing structure on that. Yeah, yeah. Or you can go with the Smith Realizer, but that, again, is three or 4,000 bucks. <laughs> yeah, well... Wow. It, uh, worth it, though, if you've got that wallet that we were talking about before. Exactly. Put that with a pair of stacks and you really got something, huh? They're actually one of the few stacks dealers, yeah. They actually oh, can yeah. sell you the stacks right along with their gear, yeah. Uh, uh. Well, we got tons more questions. Before we get to them, though, I do want to th take a moment to thank our other sponsor for this episode, Netflix, which, of course, as we all know, uh, provides thousands of TV shows and movies that can be streamed instantly to your TV, your PC, uh, your tablet, your smartphone, just about any device and all devices now uh, offer Netflix streaming. You can even start your streaming on one device and finish it on another. So uh, super convenient. And uh, the streams start virtually instantly and uh, it makes it very easy to deal with. Uh, there's no hassle. Time is non-existent except for the time you take to watch the show. So um, if you're not a gamer, you, you can get it on a gaming platform as well. I didn't mention that before, but uh, PS3 and Wii and uh, Xbox 360 all offer Netflix streaming as well. However you get it, you're going to get thousands of TV shows and movies streamed to your device instantly. And of course, you can cancel any time, but who'd want to? For your free 30-day trial, which is being offered to all TWIT listeners, you can go to netflix.com slash TWIT. So be sure to use that URL, netflix.com slash TWIT. And we thank Netflix for their support of Home Theater Geeks and the TWIT Network. So, okay, um, let's see. I think I've gotten a question, a couple of questions in here about... Uh, monoprice headphones. Have you ever have you ever listened to monoprice headphones? I know they make great cables. Great. Uh, no, I, I, I haven't. Uh, Steve Gutenberg recently uh, did a review on their twenty two dollar headphone and said it was great. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I trust Steve, so they they're probably pretty good. Yeah, exactly right. <clears throat> well, we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, oh, another question here is: Have you tried Sonamax sculpted ears? No. Haven't tried those. Okay. The, no. Now that brings up that, 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 that reminds me of the question about custom molded in-ear headphones. Right. Um, which a lot of musicians use on stage as their monitors. Um, I myself have a pair of custom molded earplugs that is just noise reducing. They're not active at all. They don't have any drivers in them, but um, that is another way to go. I think it would offer you better noise isolation, um, but it's pretty expensive too. You have to go to an audio, uh, audiologist and get your ear molds done, and then they send that right. off to the company and so on. Have you ever done that yourself? Do you have a pair of custom molded? Yeah, I've, well, I've got a lot of them actually. Uh, and uh, you can get custom uh, molded headphones from, uh, for example, Jerry Harvey Audio. JH Audio has a JH... Oh, they have a whole range of them, actually, from between 500 up to $1,300, I think. I'm not really quite sure what their prices are. Uh, Westone has them. Uh, we had this discussion one time where I says, I, 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 a lot of times I don't think that the custom uh, molded ones provide as much isolation as the deep seating in-ear ones because mm -hmm. the custom molded ones tend to be stiff and the seal breaks a little bit, whereas oh, right. the deep seating ones... Uh, uh, are, are a little bit pliant and can go in there. Westone has a very interesting uh, in-ear monitor in their high-end uh, custom in-ear monitor where the most of the shell is uh, some sort of an acrylic, a stiff, rigid material. And then they change material somehow. They, they fuse a different material to that so that the part that goes into your ear is flexible. And so that provides a little bit uh, better isolation. Um, uh, Ultimate Ears makes some, um, Unique Melody out of Australia makes some custom molded ear phones. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of them around and, uh, 
They're very, very good. The Jerry Harvey 13 and Jerry Harvey 16 is just fabulously good. I love those two headphones. Well, let's finish up with uh, your picks for 2011. I've gotten some uh, questions in the chat room about that as well. Um, what, what are some of your favorite headphones from this year? Well, I think certainly the big news is this headphone right here, which is the uh, Odyssey LCD3. This is a almost $2,000 headphone. This is a planar magnetic headphone, and um, it is very, very good. Uh, extraordinary bass extension, very flat frequency response. Um, uh, just a gorgeous headphone. Uh, not not the speed of the electrostatic headphones, but uh, the the weight and heft of the the lows are just spectacular. So, but not uh, overbearing. No, no, they're flat, but but they they're flat to ten hertz. Holy so, smokes! Yeah, they're just stunning uh, in terms of the bass response. I love these headphones. Um, and again, those are the Audis. Odyssey, A-U-D-E-Z apostrophe E, LCD-3. They also make an LCD-2 that is uh, $800, uh, $900 or almost $1,000. It's also very good, but not quite as quick as the newer LCD-3. The new LCD-3 has a substantially lighter diaphragm material. Those are planar magnetic headphones. They're kind of like electrostatic headphones where they have a a, a trace embedded on the uh, surface of the diaphragm, and there's a bunch of magnets in there that, um, when the current goes through the trace, it, it attracts or repels um, right. against the magnets. They're great. Um, okay. Another favorite for this year is uh, this was in the Celebrity Headphone Deathmatch last week. This is the V Moda V80, and there's also an M80. These are great sounding on ear headphones. Next year, we may end up talking about the M100, which is coming down the pipeline, uh, and it has uh, what he calls the modiophile, the modern audiophile frequency <laughs> response curve. He's got a he's got a LP two LP and LP and LP two the crossfade LP and the crossfade LP two which are uh, bass accentuating headphones. I don't like bass accentuating headphones that much typically, but for a bass accentuating headphone, I think the LP two is the way to go. It's it's pretty good. Uh, another really good headphone that came out this year is the Creative Orvana Live, A-U-R-V-A-N-A, -A, Live, exclamation mark. <laughs> this headphone is made by uh, Fostex in uh, Japan, and uh, Denon used to make a headphone called the uh, D-1001, and it discontinued it, came out with the D-1100, which sounded bleh. And... Uh, <laughs> Because they dropped the D1001, Foster was able to sell the design to somebody else, and Creative picked it up. So this headphone is virtually identical to the previous Denon D1001, which was very, very good sounding, and so is this one. But this one is about two-thirds the price. It comes in at about 65 bucks or something like that. So the Creative Orvana Live, that is a headphone to remember and, and put on your gift list and stuff like that. It's inexpensive and very, very good sounding. Um, so I like that one a lot, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, other headphones for this year? Well, the uh, the Bayer Dynamic DT1350. Uh this is just a spectacular headphone. Great headphone for DJs. Great headphones for professionals in the electronic news gathering and remote recording and stuff like that. Stays on your head very, very well. Uh, it's very secure. And it, the sound is extraordinary. Um, it's a little uneven because of the small size and the sealed nature of these headphones. Uh, it tends to make the sound a little uneven. But uh, for this type of headphone, they sound very, very good. And the bass, again, extends uh, almost flat to 10 hertz. It's not, not quite as good as the Odyssey's, but the, the bass is fabulous on these headphones. Um, uh, and how much are they? These are about $300. Uh, and the thing to be careful of is Buyer makes a headphone that looks almost identical to this but doesn't have the split head pan. That's the uh, T50P. It looks like this, but it doesn't sound anywhere near as good. And so sometimes people see it, and they and it's a little bit cheaper, and they go, "Oh, I should get that." You know, it must be the same thing. And it's, it's not. Mm. The 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 uh, DT1350 is a fabulous sounding headphone. Okay. 
Uh, Where would you say the, as you're looking there, what, what would you say the um, sort of the sweet spot in, in performance, price performance ratio is? Probably those where we started, which is the HD 650 and you know 600, the Sennheiser HD 650. Yeah, I think those are great for the price. I really do. I, How I, much you know, are they again? I, you probably said earlier, but oh, they're the 650 is around 400 dollars. Okay. So, yeah, maybe maybe a little more. Mm -hmm. 600 is uh, discontinued, so, but it's still available in, in clearance out on the web. So it's quite inexpensive. The difference between the two is not much. If you can get a pair of 600s. That's definitely a good thing. Here's, a, here's another sweet spot. This is a Spider cable. Uh, these are an in-ear uh, headphone from Spider called the Real Voice. And they're pretty weird looking. Uh, uh, but they're like 60, 70 bucks, and they sound really nice. A lot of times these in-ear headphones can have a little harsh spot up in the high. Uh, and these don't. Um, they're very smooth sounding, very organic and natural sounding. They say they were tuned specifically for the human voice, and I take that kind of talk with a big grain of salt. But these right. in particular are very, very good sounding. I, I like them a lot. Okay, very good. Uh, it, uh, somebody in the chat room is asking, what was the model number again of the Creative headphone? It's called the Creative Orvana Live. A U R V A N A or okay. Vana, right? Um, here's a little treat, though. Uh, here's something completely off the wall to to finish up here. Sure. <laughs> this this little thing right here is looks like looks a, like a resistor or something. It, it's called a mini cocky, and you'll see. See if we can get a picture of the end of the scoop there. You'll see it has a little scoopy thing on the end of it. Okay. Okay. Uh, mini Kaki. M I M I K A K I. In Japan and China, for thousands of years, for all I know, people have been scooping earwax out of their ears with these things. <laughs> <laughs> now, which, is an, which is important. Well, and I can't recommend that you put anything smaller than your elbow in your ear, as the saying goes. But I can yeah. tell you that I use the Mimi Kaki to keep my ears clean. Really? And and I find it just a effective, and b really pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, I have so to tell you, I have to tell you, I I have to put in a, a real serious word of caution here because I agree with you entirely that uh, inserting something like that into your ear is pretty dangerous. It if, is very dangerous. Whenever if, I did it, if I you hit your down. eardrum, then yes. you're in deep trouble. But you know, putting these in and out of your ears all the time is pretty dangerous too, because you're shoving wax in there all the time. You're well, pushing that's true. it backwards. That's you true. know your ear the skin in your ear canal grows uh, out from from about the bony area out of your ear every two weeks. So if you I see those little those little flaky things that come out of your ear sometimes, that's, that's the skin of your ear canal. And so there's a natural method for wax to come out of your ears uh, by the skin transporting it out. And the problem is the in-ear headphones, when you put them in, if it pushes the wax past the bony part of your ear canal, then um, the skin can't transport it back out again. Mm -hmm. And then you can get impacted wax and stuff like that back there. Well, so, yes, I agree. This, there's a huge cautionary note on this thing, but they work. And, you and use it, okay. It. Yeah, and they've been doing it in China and Japan for thousands of years. Just Google it, Mimi, M-I-M-I-K-A-K-I, -I -I, and they have all sorts of them. They have, they have, you know, the Japanese, man. They have cameras, you know, ones with cameras and stuff on it. You can look up your television and... <laughs> Oh man, I have to tell you, I I do suffer from from earwax buildup, and I I go to my ENT and have him do it. <laughs> yeah. I I really don't want to take the chance, but okay. you know, if you if you do, that's totally fine. Uh, and and so I far, it's worked for you. I don't recommend it. I don't yeah. recommend it, but I do it. 
Now, uh, F and Dunn in the chat room, one, one last quick question. Do you, do you ever look at headphones uh, for cell phones that have a mic on them? For example, you're using one right now. Sure. Well, nowadays, there are mo most headphones come with it. So um, it's, uh, you know, that it's pretty predictable that you're almost not even going to be able to buy headphones without uh, a remote and mic on it um, pretty soon here. Mm. But yes, I absolutely do. Uh, and like the, uh, B the Bowers and Wilkins P5, um, that's a lovely headphone to use as a, a headset. This is the uh, Blue Ant Embrace. It's uh, very similar to the B&W P5, and it's uh, $100 less. The B&W P5 is $300, and these are $200. The Blue Ant Embrace. Both are very nice headphones uh, for around-the-house headset use, easy on, easy off. I'm, um, I'm wearing the, the B&W P5s as we speak. There you go. Yeah, they're a great headphone. I love those headphones. Yeah, yeah. Well, great. Uh, one, one final question. Uh, your top, top pick, headphone of 2011, price no object, what's the creme de la creme? It's a hard one between the Odyssey LCD3 and the Stax SR009. Uh, both of them, I think, are... Uh, marvels of development uh and the sennheiser hd 800 for the year before or whatever it was because that mm -hmm. this is technically an extraordinary headphone i've never it's the best measuring headphone by a long shot and best imaging headphone i've ever heard fantastic Fantastic. Well, great. Uh, Tile Hertzens, uh, once again, thank you so much for being on again this week uh, and uh, filling our heads with headphone knowledge. Uh, it's been great <laughs> fun, and uh, I hope you have great, happy holidays. Thanks very much, Scott. You too. You bet. Okay, you can uh, read all of Tile's stuff at his website, innerfidelity.com. And uh, my online home, of course, is hometheater.com. And you can email me at scott at twit. TV. And you can follow me on Twitter at HTGeekScott. Next week, I'm taking the day off. It's Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, and I'm going to uh, take a little vacation. So this is our final show for 2011. I do hope you'll join me the following week, however, with uh, another fascinating guest as yet to be finalized. And uh, right after that, we will have CES, and we'll be coming at you from CES. I'll be joining uh, Leo Laporte on the show floor to talk about uh, what's new and coming up in 2012. So I do sure hope you will join us for that. Until then, geek out.